Well, hello, my friends. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, we are today going to be going into the continuing series of trading Eichel to every team, seeing what they would have to give up, if the possibility is there for them to acquire him. And then over time, we're going to you know, narrow it down to what would be the most likely teams to be able to do that uh, kind of a deal. Assuming he gets traded, yes. I have a lot of people that are like, well, you know, I'm not going to trade for him. Why would you trade for an injured asset? Of course, this is probably, this is not going to happen. And if, if you don't know, Eichel has a neck uh, fusion issue. Um, it is, from what I've read, it's an issue that a lot of players have had. They usually come back from it fine. Uh, what's going on with the Buffalo Sabres and him is whether they do surgery or not do surgery. This sort of thing happens all the time. Eichel's not very happy with the communication that's been going between them. He's mentioned that in his uh, in interviews and stuff like that. He's not happy with the organization in general, and I don't blame him. Um, the question will be now is will they be able to convince him to stay? Uh, if not, isn't maybe... It's in their best interest to, to move on and regroup this whole organization and bring a whole new flavor of uh, people in a new culture. Uh, not that there's something wrong with Eichel. I, I also get in my Facebook uh, commu- conversations, Twitter and all of that, people bring up a lot that he was a cancer in the room. I'm not hearing that from anybody that ever played with him or anything like that. Although losing wears on, on players and in in uh, your culture in your room in a room at all period and there's been lots of teams that have said you know what we gotta we just went through a losing phase here we got to get this energy out of here move some players out and uh, bring a much more winning uh, mentality and have players that have not gone through what these players have gone through that could happen with uh, Reinhardt that's going to be part of the the uh, equation of what they get back with Eichel um, and uh, many other players on that team. So I just did one uh, a video because I wanted to uh, kind of get an idea of what Buffalo might be looking for in return here. Check it out. It's uh, what where where's uh, I believe it's where's I where's Buffalo going with Eichel? Uh, check it out. There's been some comments in the comment sections that are pretty interesting. Um, and I'm really enjoying this. I, I like the communication. I got I got I even like people that hit, that just go on there and go, you're a freaking idiot. <laughs> okay, could be right. I don't know. Uh, I just having fun and seeing. Uh, I like doing these trades. I like doing. I like seeing uh, what teams may give up and how. And I like to see what people the perception of players are from other people and all that kind of stuff like that. Maybe you will too. So we're gonna get into it. We got three teams today. We did. Uh, we did uh, Ottawa. We did Detroit. We did the New York Rangers. Um, those were kind of the big ones. Today, I guess you could say big ones. Uh, there's other ones as well. Go check them out. Pretty fun stuff. Um, we are going to be looking at the Florida Panthers, uh, the Montreal Canadiens, and uh, we'll see what the other one's going to be. I'm kind of on the on the fence about but Montreal Canadiens and the Florida Panthers for sure. So... Let's take a look at the Florida Panthers. Uh, the Florida Panthers in this situation. Now, I think any team is going to be interested in Eichel. Uh, how much interest? Varying interest. I don't think there's anybody going to be like, oh, no, I'm out of this. Uh, the other one is Arizona. Why, why did we forget about Arizona? Arizona was actually in the news a lot, in the media a lot, about having interest in Eichel. Uh, if you will believe the reports out there, they are all over it if he's available. So we'll look at that in a second. But Florida has not been. Um, for good reason, they just kind of built this team up now to where they are. Uh, they're, this is like their first really good year in a while. They brought in guys like Patrick Hornfrist. Again, also, talk about teams that are cha- changing the culture. Uh, they traded Hoffman. Uh, to St. Louis, who, you know, um, has seemed to have a little bit of room difficulties in Ottawa. Um, and uh, 
So maybe that continued here. That's just speculation. I don't really know. But um, and Dadonov, they traded Dadonov to Ottawa, who they uh, cleared room for by trading Marcia Show and Smith to um, Vegas in the expansion draft. And it worked out to a certain degree, but obviously they thought there was a better way of going for various reasons with the Donoff. So here we go. First of all, Florida would be interested because having a name like Eichel in your room would be absolutely enormous for them. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a team that's very well known, has a difficult time drawing fans. Um, and a big name like Eichel, a superstar like Eichel, a franchise player like Eichel in this organization would be huge. The question is, does it make sense for them to do that sort of thing? Also, if you look um, in that Buffalo uh, Sabres video that I did and my other videos as well, I talk about and a fellow named Gavin. I know he's just an average dude, but he did a really good job of bringing up uh, some writers from the uh, – Athletic and other posts uh, talking about, I think Ray Ferrero was one of them, talking about what the package would look like. Ray Ferrero thought it would be like five to seven players or, or uh, five to seven assets going to Buffalo. Like there's a huge, there'll be a huge interest in Eichel after he gets over his injury. No doubt about it. Um, I also talk about in Buffalo, what, how, why I think Eichel is as great as he is. You can look at that and tell me if you agree or not. Or great, I, I, why he is a great player. I shouldn't say great as he is. Others, there's a lot of people out there that I'm talking to that don't think Eichel is as good as people are saying that he's overrated. Maybe you think that as well. So, if let's say Florida is talking on the phone and they're giving up an offer to see if they can maybe come up with something here, um, it would be a difficult trade for Florida. I, I'm sure that if they're going to do this, Barkoff is off the table. Unless, I believe Barkoff, if we look at it here, is, uh, just make sure that you guys can see this all right. Yep. Barkoff is up for 21-22. He's got one more year of his contract at seven point that four and a half million. That's going to be way higher, the next contract. I'll tell you that right now. Eichel is making $10 million a year right now. I would not doubt that Barkoff is right in that wheelhouse. He's a Selkie Trophy candidate almost every year. He's a great, uh, he, he puts up a point a game or even could be better. And he still has some pretty good upside at 25 years old. So now, if Alexander Barkov is like, I don't know if I want to stay in Florida, which there has been murmurs about. Uh, those are just rumors. Uh, we don't really know for sure. Um, then you could use Barkov in the trade. And then this actually becomes more of a possibility. If you can put Barkov in this deal, and I believe Eichel is a, a far better player than Barkov, and, and that's no slight against Barkov. I think he's that good. He is a on a good team. I think Eichel could put 120 points on the board, and his defensive analytics are absolutely off the charts. Crazy. He should be getting much more consideration for Selkie if Buffalo wasn't such a bad team. In fact, I wouldn't doubt if he picks one up in his career, assuming he can get on a decent team. So. You'd have Alexander Barkov, um, and then I really like Frank Vitrano. I love Frank Vitrano. Owen Tippett's going to be a name that would definitely be coming up in this one, and I love Owen Tippett too. He's really been having, really had a strong year this year. He's got four points in the playoffs this year, uh, so, and he had a pretty darn good year. I have a feeling they're going to try to avoid that. If they're going to give Barkoff, they'll maybe Frank Vitrano they would consider. He's probably reached his peak as a 25, 20 to 25 goal scorer. Not the greatest defensively, but I think he's even got more in him myself. I love his shot. He's, he's got an amazing shot, and he would be worthy to put in a package like this. Um, 
Now, you would have to look at, definitely look at prospects. You'd definitely be throwing first round up. At least one first round pick, probably more. Now, if it's me, I'm clamoring to get Mackenzie Weger in this deal. And I know that, uh, I know that uh, Mackenzie Weger is, or that uh, Buffalo is kind of strong on defense on the right side, but I am a huge fan of Mackenzie Weger. Big, big fan. So I would definitely be looking at Mackenzie Weger as part of the deal. I think Florida would be resisting an awful lot, especially if they put Barkoff in the deal. Um, so that being aside, let's say we can't make anything like that, and, and they just go, no, we don't want Weger in there. Buffalo doesn't need to go huge on defense here. Gregory Denisenko almost certainly would be on here. And I know Florida loves Gregory De Denisenko, and for good reason. He, uh, he, played a, he played a little bit this year, put up um, some pretty decent numbers in the KHL. And from what I saw of him, uh, World Junior Championships, he had nine points in seven games. He had 12 points in 38 games as a, I believe he was a 19-year-old. That is really good numbers in the K. Usually in the KHL, they don't play young players very much. You have to be very special for them to play you at all. And he put up 12 points. So excellent prospect. I would be looking at that. It would be something like that. Barkov, Petrano, uh, and um, Denisenko. Maybe you don't have to add in the first there. Maybe you do. It depends on how high you are on these players. For Gregory Den Denisenko, I'm pretty darn high on him. I would really like that. I would really be all over that. The hard thing is putting Barkov in the deal. Um, again, if Barkov's intimating that he might go check the market, though, or uh, was he going to be a restricted free agent, uh, or he's considering the possibility of maybe just having a short-term deal so he can get to free agency, you may definitely be thinking like this because the Florida Panthers could use a Jack Eichel. Barkoff is cool, but he's not sexy. I'm sorry, in the sense, not looking. I'm talking about as a pure um, offensive dynamo like Eichel is, a superstar, a name that everybody knows. And uh, Florida would definitely like to have something like that. Another thing you could think of with them is they have so many goaltenders coming up in the minors and uh, also on their team. Now, I'm pretty sure they're not going to have Spencer Knight, but Drigger would be good. However, I don't think Drigger is going to be there. I must remind you, this deal is not going to happen until after a surgery or when, whatever they decide to do for his neck. So um, it would be later. Drigger probably won't be on the team by that time. Um, but you got, you know, Samuel Mothenball hasn't really been able to find his place in uh, the NHL, but you could throw him in there. He still has upside. He's a big goaltender at 24 years old. Um, he's still got time to be pretty darn good. Um, uh, Devin Levi had an exceptional World Junior Championships. He was a late-round draft pick. That's a guy maybe you could be looking at. Of course, there's Anton Lundell, which I'm sure they're going to be doing some magic to try to pretend that they don't have Lundell because Lundell would definitely be somebody they'd be looking in this package. He has put up some incredible numbers in uh, Finland this year. Or sorry, in uh, yeah, in Finland this year, 25 points in 26 games, 16 goals. As a 19-year-old, that is some pretty darn good numbers. He was a first-round pick by them, I believe, I want to say 12th overall or something like that uh, last year, and he's doing fantastic. So now let's say that Barkoff is not part of the deal. So we're not doing Barkoff, forget about it. Less likely that the deal gets done first. And the reason why is you're going to have to give up so much off your lineup. You'd have to have, I think they would be interested in Sam Bennett to a certain extent that they just got from Calgary. Um, that you could put that in there because they might want another center, of course. They're probably going to want another center with Eichel in the uh, mix. Now, if they're smart, they've got, if they can get, keep Reinhardt happy in Buffalo, um, Middlestat started looking good at the end of the year and they've been working on with him for a long time. 
probably not a bad idea to just go after wingers. And uh, who are they missing off the wing here? Mason Marchment is not, should not be there. It should be another injured player. Oh, well. Um, I don't know why I can't find it. But they right now, you know, you got Carter Verhage. Nothing that I, Carter Verhage's had a great year, but are are, are we are you going to be looking at uh, banking that he's going to keep on rolling that way? He just started putting up offense this year. Uh, I can't see Huberto honestly being part of this deal. I think if it's not Barkov, you're in a pretty tough spot to actually be able to do much here. Um, you'd have to have Vertrano, Owen Tippett, um, just grab wingers like crazy. And then, of course, as we were talking, we just talked about, you go down to the prospects and go after Anton Lundell in that deal, then first-round picks. That would basically be assuming that they're doing a full rebuild there. I get the inkling that Buffalo's going to try to get for now a lot and try to add a few more pieces for their future as well. They just can't go through that kind of a rebuild after being 10 years uh, so bad right now. They're going to want players that can play right now. Uh, Gregory De De Denisenko, basically you'd throw all of your prospects. Denisenko, Lundell, uh, Owen Tippett, like all of these, a, a, a lot of quality packages plus first round picks. So tell me if you're a Florida fan, would you be interested in the sexy pick of Eichel? Assuming he gets back to where he can be and he could be a 120-point performer, uh, especially if for some reason you could get away with it without giving up Barkov. You could have Eichel and Barkov as your top two centers with uh, Sam Bennett has played wing, as you can tell here. He's got uh, played left wing and right wing. Uh, so tell me about what you think there, if that is any possibility at all for you. And we're going to move over to Arizona. Um, Arizona has actually kind of let it out in the media that they'd be very interested in uh, Eichel if that were to come available. I've read it, numerous articles on it. One of these days I should actually put those articles up here and show them to you, but whatever. You can look it up for yourself. Arizona has definite interest. Um, the, how possible would it be for them to do it? The first thing first, if they were to do this, oh, we love coffee. Uh, they would have to um, basically do a complete rebuild all over again because they're going to give up almost everything they have to grab them and then build around that team, which is a great idea, except they're in Arizona where they're trying to draw fans. Now, Eichel will draw fans, no doubt about that. Eichel also does not have a no-movement clause right now. So if Buffalo were to do something like this, he would have no choice but to go, pretty much. Except he can say, okay, I'm staying in Buffalo because they're only trading him if he is really pushing the envelope to be traded. So I'm going to, uh, so with that in mind, what would it cost Arizona to do this? Now, remember, as we do all of these, uh, you're going to see that there's certain teams that look like they have more to give than others and our greater possibility to get Eichel if he ever comes up. Plus we got a year for assets to be brought up and stuff like that. Personally for me, I am all over Jacob Chipkern. I don't even care if I need defensemen. I can trade a defenseman away. Uh, and there is defensemen in Buffalo that Rista Linen has probably needs to be traded. But he's a left defenseman, not really what they need but he's a Norris future possibility. Remember this name if you don't know, maybe follow Arizona much or whatever. Jacob Chikrin will be up for Norris's in his future. He is an awesome defenseman. Um, I would think that Arizona would do everything they can to keep him out of their conversation. However, I don't think that it would be likely that they'd be able to. Uh, Ekman, Oliver Ekman Larson had they already kind of went and tried to trade him last year, and he's got a no movement clause where he can basically pick who he wants to go to. He chose Buffalo or Florida, highly unlike or not Buffalo, Boston or Florida. Couldn't get a work deal done with those teams, so he ended up staying. 
Uh, highly unlikely as well that he's going to say okay to Buffalo. So he's off. Uh, as far as forwards are concerned, it's going to take Clayton Keller for sure. 22 years old. Um, it's weird. He's considered a bit of a disappointment from when he was drafted, uh, which was uh, 2016. So he's been a, around for a little bit. But he's been, he probably started playing when he was too young. He was one of those guys in Arizona when they had this philosophy that they're going to play their young guys uh, as much as they possibly can. And it probably hurt him a little bit. Not to mention the philosophy of the Arizona Coyotes and Rick Talk, it probably hurts him a little bit. It's a very defensive philosophy there. He doesn't put up huge numbers, as you can tell by his plus minus, which I don't like to go to too much because it doesn't tell the whole story. But even his defensive analytics in general have not been good. Um, I just don't think it's the right system for him. He's only 22 years old. He's probably got a fair amount of, he's got a fair amount of upside. He's got a great shot and a lot of talent. And I'm sure that they would be a part of this deal. And I actually think Arizona would not be holding on to him too tightly. That would leave another guy that I really love, Christian Dvorak. Great two-way center. Uh, I shouldn't call him great. I maybe throw that word around a little too much. A very good two-way center right now who still has tons of upside. Put up 31 points and 38 points on, on, on again, a very defensive system team. Um, that if you were to put him in a different situation with better line mates, I think he could put up 50 to 60 possibly in a in his in, in a year, and uh, give you great, uh, very good two way play. I like him a lot. He's got uh, he's only 25. He's young, and I think that's kind of players that Buffalo is going to be hoping to grab a lot of guys that are right around that wheelhouse of 22 to 25 that are ready to play right now so they don't have to go through this deep rebuild. Um, so it would be Clayton Keller, Christian Dvorak, and as you can tell, we're going to look at the depth chart here after we make put this up there. You know, Connor Garland, who's a restricted free agent, would probably be in the mix. Um, if they're willing to go Jacob Chikrin, they might be able to get away with uh, like Clayton Keller, Chikrin, and a first or something like that. That's assuming that's assuming that Buffalo sees in Chikrin what a lot of other people do as a future Norris Trophy candidate on defense. Um, I throw in a couple first-round picks, which they don't have this year, but they do have next year. And that would be the biggest thing in this deal. Next year, Arizona, even with Eichel in the lineup, is, not, is probably not going to be very good especially if you were to get rid of Jacob Chikrin. Uh, their defense, a lot of them are going to be free agents this year. They're going to have to bring in some more guys. So that would be a very high pick. And with Wright and Savoy up there on the board, who are two possible franchise centers, you might be able to get another franchise center again to replace the one you're trading here. Again, Arizona is one of those organizations where – Having a guy like Eichel would be huge for them because they don't draw too many people either. They're in a very market that they're trying to build a fan base and all of that. And a guy like Eichel's name, he draws people to the rink. He draws people to the arena. And they certainly need that. I can see why they're all over this. Um, you can throw in Nick Schmaltz. Um, a lot of guys there that, that they would be able to... Uh, Throw, oh, I forgot about on defense, too. There was another one, uh, another guy who they were actually playing, uh, Samuelson. Uh, why do they not have him on there right now? Um, it's not Samuelson. Soderstrom, Victor Soderstrom. Put up good numbers in junior, really high on this kid. So it would be kind of a – it could be a very defensive uh, – he got two points in four games when he played – he got 10 points in 32 games for Tucson as a 19-year-old. Uh, six points in 12 games playing in a lower league in Europe. He's probably going to be a while before you see him in a regular lineup. They just wanted to give him a look-see in the NHL. But there's a, there's a couple possibilities of a package here that may be okay. I don't know if it's going to be good enough compared to some of the other teams that we're going to see. 
And I'm going to kind of skip over a little bit. I've been doing it from the for the teams that have the most amount of cap space. And uh, but this time I want to go to a team that's in the playoffs right now that especially if they lose in the first round this year, they would probably be on the phone. Uh, Bergevin, as we've seen from last year, this is the Montreal Canadiens, obviously, I should tell you that. Uh, this is the Montreal Canadiens, obviously. Uh, they've done crazy stuff. They went out and got to Foley last year. They, they did a, a trade for Ty Domi, brought in Anderson, Josh Anderson, which was a very risky pickup. He just came off a year of injury Gave him $5 million a year, $5.5 million a year for six years. This is a team, Bergevin is not afraid to take risks and make big plays. Um, and they are never, probably ever, going to be in a full rebuild. They're constantly looking to make their team better. And a sexy pick like Eichel for them would be huge. The problem, of course, here is that it's in their own division. That's going to make things fairly difficult. But if they put a package together sweet enough, Buffalo might say, you know what? I don't care. We just need to get some really good players here. And Montreal does have those, especially at center. They have a fellow named Nick Suzuki. You might have heard of him. Excellent number one, future number one center. He's only 21 years old. He's already putting up 41 points in 56 games in Montreal, playing in the number one center position in the, uh, in the uh, very intense Montreal market and doing very well. Um, there's people out there that may say, you know, he's as good as Eichel. He could be as good as Eichel. I don't think he's quite as good as Eichel. He's on the small side as well um, at 5'11", but he's got just the sick, he's got very sick hands, crazy sick hands. And uh, he definitely is a number one center. He's definitely a future number one center. I just don't think he's Eichel level number one center. I don't know what Montreal thinks about that. Uh, but for a guy like Eichel, if they think he's a 120 point guy that can possibly win Selkies in the future that I do, they're going to be interested. And Suzuki might actually be on the table here. We'll try to do a deal where they don't use Suzuki as well. Um, in this deal. But if they do, they won't have to give up as much anywhere else in their lineup and hurt so much their depth. Um, as far as what, who's in the lineup, you know, you got Art, Arturi Lekkinen would could, could be part of that deal. Then you know what people think of them. They seem to have lost favor, favor and then came back to favor with Arturi Lekkinen. He looks like a solid third-line winger for the long term, put up some decent points. He can put up some points in the lower lines for you. And he's a young guy. Uh, as far as defensemen are concerned, they really don't have too much to offer right now. Now, the big name, of course, that you're going to look at here is Cole Caulfield. Would they include Cole Caulfield in this deal? I think they're going to try to stay away from it. I honestly, I'm not sure that they wouldn't go stick with, uh, put Suzuki in there since they're getting a center back over Caulfield. Caulfield has incredible hands. He's already at 20 years old. He's played in the, I don't know why they didn't play him in the playoffs, but the, what he's showing in the NHL is almost like Kaprizov type level. And we've seen what Kaprizov can do. Um, I could be wrong about that. Montreal's also not really usually big on small players. So it's possible they could think of Caulfield in the package, uh, Maybe Caulfield, and then you go with uh, Kokaniemi instead of Suzuki. And, uh, you know, a package of Ryan Paling, first-round picks. Uh, I don't know if they would like uh, Romanoff, possibly, something of that nature. Maybe not all of these guys at one time but uh, in one package, but these guys could very well be part of the package. If Caulfield's in there, Caulfield, Kokaniemi, uh and uh, say they're not really needing defensemen, but Josh Brook, uh, guys like that, Luke Tuck, you know, a whole 
more quantity of, of players that are ready to play right now uh, than uh, necessarily full quality. Depending on what they, who they, uh, it's hard to get a read on Montreal what they, who their favorite players are and what they really like. But it's possible. They, they have the pieces here to put something together that would pique Montreal's interest. Tell me what you think. Put down in the comment section, if you could, a package that you would give for a healthy Eichel. You know he's going to be fine. According to, from all I've heard, the surgery that they are going, that they could do here would uh, be uh, a pretty uh, pretty successful one, very successful one, if they go for surgery. In fact, players have not had surgery and come back just fine from this. Uh, so I think it would be a pretty decent um, possibility that he'll be fine. But we are definitely assuming that he's going to be fine. Well, that's my full 42, I believe. Oh, my gosh, I went 30 minutes. I got to let you go. Okay, bye.